Hi everyone, welcome back to Java class. In today's session, you will learn what is a J table in Swing's toolkit and how to create a J table in Java programming language. So here in this picture, you can see how J table is stored the data in tabular format. J table is a Swing component that display the data in a tabular format means your data will be present in the form of rows and columns. So let us move forward and understand what are the different constructors are used to create a J table in Java programming language. So here we have a constructor J table. It create a default table with no data inside it. In the similar way, we have multiple constructor of J tables. So let us move to the Eclipse IDE and understand with the help of a programming example how to create a J table in Java programming language. So here we go. You can see we have created a class J table example. Inside it, we have set up a frame or we are visualizing this frame. On this frame, we will create a J table that will store some data. So let us see what is the output of this program. First, we will run this program and you will see what is the output of this program? So here we go. You can see this is the output of this program. It is creating a blank frame. So over this frame, we will create a J table. So let us explore how to create a J table. So here we will create a J table with a default constructor. So how will you create a J table? So simply you will create an instance of a J table. Here you can see J table table one is equal new J table. So this J table is defined inside Java X dot swings package. And what is the purpose of it? You can see here it. It is used to display and edit a regular two dimensional table of cells. So it will create a table. So to create a J table, you will create or you will use one more class that is a default table model and you will create the object of it. Default table model model one is equal new default table model. What is the purpose of it and what this class is doing here? You can see. This construct a default table model, which is a table that contains zero rows and zero columns. So inside this default table model, we can add multiple columns and multiple rows in order to set the data inside a J table. So how will you add the columns inside it? We have a method of default table model that is add column. So inside it, I am using some methods like ID. Or in the similar way, I can use the different columns also. So next column name is the name of a person. And next column I am using the salary of a person, right? So three columns I am adding. In the similar way, you can add the row inside it. So you will use model dot add row here, right? So add row inside it, it adds a row to the end of models and row contains the data of different types. So here you will use this method. Inside it, you can add a complete records with the help of, with the help of an object class. So you will create an array of object, right? Array of objects that will help us to store the data of different types. So here you can use the ID is one. You can write the name of a person. Name of the person is John, right? Then you can enter the salary like 50,000. So in the similar way, you can add the multiple records inside it. I will just copy it and I will record multiple. I will store multiple records inside it. ID is two, ID is three. You can change the name here, right? You can write Jane Smith, right? This is the name. Jane Smith salary is 40,000. And here you can write the different name like Alice Doy or its salary is 75,000. So this is the way how to add columns inside it and how to add 
rows inside your default table model. After this, what will you do? We have a method of a G table that is a set model. So what will you do after this? You will simply do the table one dot set model here. So this is the method. So what it does, it sets the data model for this table, right? So what this default table model class is doing, it is creating a column and rows and using the set model function, you will set the model for this J table. So you will write table one dot set model or you can set your model one. So means your J table will contain this data, right? J table will contain this data. So we have added this model one with your J table and after it, what will you do? The next is you will just add a table to the frame, right? So how will you add a J table to the frame? Simply you will use a frame dot add method or inside it you will use the table one and here we go the program is completed let us run this program and let's see what is the output of it so you will run it and you will see what is the output of it here we go you can see this is the data which is showing in the form of a j table so let me just close it or i will do a little modifications like the frame size is like 1.0 and in order to add multiple data inside this J table, I'm just doing some copy and paste. So these data will be stored inside the J table. Let me see what is the output of it. You will run this program and you will see output. So you, you can see here the frame size is very small or inside it, I can't see the complete data in the J table. So how will you see the complete table in this J table? So we have to add a vertical scroll bar. So whenever the user will add multiple data, so it will generate a vertical scroll bar or you can scroll the page or you can scroll the table or you can see the complete data. But here I can't see all the records. So I will close it. So let me help you how to create a scroll bar inside it. Okay. So let us add a J scroll pane, right? How to add a J scroll pane? Simply you will use a class J scroll pane. You will create the object of it J scroll, or you can write the scroll pane. One is equal new J scroll pane, right? So this class will create a scroll pane, right? It provide a scrollable view of lightweight components and which component you would like to add inside scroll pane. I would like to use this table one. So here you will write the table one. And after this, instead of adding this table one inside a frame, you will add the scroll pane inside it, right? So here we go. Let us save this program and you will see what is the output of it. Let us run it. And here you can see this is the table that contains the scroll pane or you can scroll this j table or you can see the complete data which is stored inside a j table right so i hope you understand this part how to add a scroll pane so i will close it and i will just remove this unnecessary data so this data i have added in order to show you how to add the scroll pane right understand so this is a way let us explore the different methods of a j table so let me just see what is the output of it first so let us run it. Let me just change the dimension of it also. That is 300 and 300. Let us save this and run it. And here we go. You can see this is the final J table. So let us explore the multiple methods of a J table. If you will see inside this J table, if I will, if I will click on a name, you know, column name, the salary. It is not performing any action, right? It is not performing any action. So if you would like to just sort your rows, right? If you would like to sort your rows based on the column, so how you can use the methods. So let us explore the different methods of a J table. So you will see here, I have added the multiple methods of a J table. 
So these are the multiple methods. The set model we have used, it is used to set the data model for a table. In the similar way, you can use the multiple methods like get row count, how many rows are there inside a J table, get column count, how many columns are there, right? So in the similar way, we have multiple methods. Now I will show you how to use this method, set auto create row sorter, right? So what it does, it sets whether the table should create a row sorter automatically or not. And let me help you to understand how to use it. So let us explore the methods, means methods of a J table, right? How will you explore the methods of a J table? So I will use the table one dot set auto, set auto create row sorter, right? You can use this method or inside it you can pass true or false value so let us save this and run it you will see what is the change in the output so here we go you can see guys we have multiple columns so here is the column name is the name and you will click on this name so you can see your row data is sorted if you will click on name your data will be sorted based on the name right if you click on the salary your data will be sorted based on your salary. So 40,000, 50,000, then 75,000. So this is, if you click on ID, so you can see here your data will be, your complete row will be sorted based on your ID column. So this is the beauty of this method, right? This is the beauty of this method. In the similar way, you can explore the multiple methods also. For example, you would like to create some color of a, grid right so you, you can call a method set show grid right set show grid so it will display your grid and after that you can change the color of your grid set grid color so here you can write the color dot red right color dot red so guys in the similar way you can do the practice of the different methods of your G tables. This is your exercise. You can do the practice with the different methods. So here we go. You can see now your J table grid is showing and your grid color is a red color. So we have multiple methods you can explore. We have multiple constructor. You can explore this constructor also. Let me close it. So here in the similar way, you can use a method set row height. If you would like to change the height of a particular row, or you can use the multiple methods. So these methods we have used, uh, set show grid, set grid color. So you can explore these methods. So let us move to the constructor of J tables. So what we have used here, we have used this constructor in order to create a J table. And we have used this <coughs> constructor inside it. We are using the table model, right? Let me help you to another way to create a J table also. That is a method number two, right? Okay, so this is a method number two in order to create a J table. So what we are using here, we are creating an array of a string that contains the name of columns and we are creating an array of object. This is two dimensional array of object class. So we are using the object class in order to store the data of multiple types here, right? So this object class support to store the data of different types. So here we are creating the two dimensional array that contains the data in two dimensional array, right? So this is the data and these are the column names and how to create a table. Simply you will use a J table class. Table two is equal new J table or inside it you will pass a data and columns. So we have the different constructor in order to create a table. So you can see right now we are using this constructor. J table that create a table with the given data for rows and column names. So right now we are using this constructor in order to create a J table. So let us move back here. After this, you will create the scroll pane. One more scroll pane you will create. So that is scroll pane two or inside it, you will add your table number two. After this, what will you do? You can just add this scroll pane to the frame. So you will use the scroll pane two. Let us run this program. So what I have added here, I have added this part only. 
I have created one more scroll pane and I have added this scroll pane to your frame. So let us run this and you will see what is the output of it. So here we go, you can see it is showing the data, right? It is showing the data of the table two. It is showing the data of table two. Here you can see the data of table two, but it is not showing the data of your table one, right? It is not showing the data of table one. So what is the reason of it, right? What is the reason of it? You know very well, you know very well, uh, by default, we are using a J frame, right? So J frame default layout is the border layout or only one component will be displayed if you will not align your component in the different borders. So in order to set the different layout, you can use the set layout method. So you will use frame dot set layout or here I am using the different layout manager. So I am using a grid layout, right? So what is the purpose of grid layout? Grid layout creates a grid layout with a specified number of rows and columns and all the component in the layout are given equal size. So you can use this and you can write how many rows you want and how many columns. For example, I want two rows and one column. So what it does, it will create a frame, right? How it will create? It will create a frame that contains the two rows and one column. Inside one row, the table one data will be present or inside two, the table two data will be there, right? So let me help you to understand how to use it. So here we have set the layout of a frame and I think no need to do anything right now. So let us run it and you will see what is the output of it. So here we go, you can see this frame is showing two different table data. One is the table one and another is the table two. Understand? So this is how to create the table with the different constructor and the different methods. So here also you can explore the different methods. So here, for example, you would like to change the height of a uh, second table. So table two dot, you would like to change or set the height, set row height, right? So this is a row height or you can, you would like to change the height of your table two row. So let us, you can see previously, I will just close it. I will save it and I will run it. So here we go, you can see the output. So here, if you will see the default height of a table two, right? Default height of a row of table two is changed. Okay, you can change like, if you would like to do like 30. So your height of, table two row will be changed okay so in the similar way you can explore or you can apply the multiple methods of a j table or you can create the j tables using the multiple constructor also so guys what we have done so far you can see here we have created a frame we have set the layout like grid layout so that is your wish how many rows you would like to create how many columns you would like to create then we have created a j table using a this default constructor, then we have created a J table that contains the data and column name. We have added the scroll pane and we have explored the some methods of a J tables. So we have added a scroll pane to the frame and this frame is visible. That's it we have done. And you can see this is the output of this program. So guys, we have completed this uh, session of J table. I hope you understand and you enjoyed the journey to learn the J table of swings component. So guys, thanks for watching. In the next session, we will come up with a new video sessions. Bye-bye for now. Have a great day.